Uh, there has been quite a bit going on, and two stories that have caught my eye is the FBI raid, or it's been called a raid, or is it a raid, on Mar El Lago, that is uh, Donald Trump's home, and Alex Jones, $49 million in damages uh, against Alex Jones in a court hearing because, of course, he said the Sandy Hook massacre was all a put-up job and many of the grieving parents who'd lost kids, oh, they were just crisis actors. Well, the jury has found pretty clearly against Alex Jones, but will that do anything to stop this boneheaded buffoon or not? We go stateside now to our correspondent, Mr Stephen Wilde. Steve, how are you? I'm very well. Good morning. Um, look, can we start with Alex Jones? That was a slam dunk. That wasn't didn't go on for weeks and weeks like Johnny and Amber. He was basically totally found out as a BS artist, wasn't he? Yeah, strange sort of thing, really, because it almost appeared to me that his own attorney threw him under the bus. There was uh, uh, this uh, file, really, which was sent across uh, to the prosecution, uh, it appeared that uh, all the secrets and inside bits and pieces were, were sort of handed over and then uh, the big gotcha moment, I think uh, Alex Jones called it the, the Perry Mason moment uh, inside the court where where they sort of asked him, well, you know, you were asked to disclose uh, if you had any text messages uh, regarding Sandy Hook and uh, you said you didn't. And yet, uh, you know, a week ago we were handed this file uh, which showed that you did. Uh, he, it was a big gotcha moment. And really, it appeared that uh, even his own attorney uh, was feeling some delight in throwing him under the bus. A very strange thing, though, really, isn't it, all of this? Oh, um, look at Alex think... Jones. He looks like a heart, a heart attack waiting to happen <laughs> and half a brain <laughs> looking for its other half. But he is phenomenally wealthy and phenomenally successful in the United States, isn't he? Well, this is the thing that I've noticed is that, uh, you know, the, the foundation of what he talks about, a lot of his rhetoric is actually seems very plausible and is based really on this very uh, solid conservative sort of uh, base. Then it starts branching off into, woo I mean, aliens, and you've got all sorts of things. Uh, it, I wonder whether, you know, in some cases, uh, just the, the whole glory and fame and this uh, that builds up into this, uh, you know, that I can say anything, I can believe anything and say it, and it all just goes way off course. Yeah. Uh, is, I $49 million really gonna sink, is $49 million going to sink He'll him, never Steve? pay that. What? He'll never pay that. I think that this will go on and on and on, and it is always the lawyers who win in this country. Um, uh, you know, I think I think it'll. Be, well, there's a perjury thing coming up now. I mean, that this will never be out of the court. Um, and if anything, he'll probably walk away uh, in a bankrupt situation. And then, you know, there'll be money uh, tied up in other areas where he can continue on. I don't know, but uh, I mean, it, it's always the lawyers who win in this country. And InfoWars hasn't been taken down. It is still broadcasting or selling its weird message across the United States and through the internet. Uh, uh, well, well, I think he, not just that. I think that he has a whole line of, um, of supplements and <laughs> vitamins. And, and he looks like he's not taking his own pro product because he sort of was coughing and spluttering his way through the trial. He looked like he was on death's door. I, I wonder whether he needs to take some of his own vitamins. But, um, look, uh, I don't think it's the end of this guy. I think that there's always a resurrection of, of, uh, of the downtrodden in America. I mean, you can go bankrupt how many times and still keep coming back. I, I think that it's, it's all part of the theatre of living in the United States of America. Yeah, that's right. Well, OK, let's move on to another one of America's finest, uh, President Donald Trump. He's still called president under the American system. The FBI have, well, and I use the word advisedly, raided his home in Mar-a-Lago? Yes. This is proving to be quite explosive because uh, I think really, look, it's an unprecedented situation. Uh, the, you know, look... We only need to go back to Nixon and look at how how um, uh, Americans treat their crooked presidents. And I'm not saying that Donald Trump is a crook. I don't know, actually, uh, that answer. But the thing is, is that the FBI, the, the, the justice arm, um, if you like, 
never, you know, the, the, it's not to be messed with on, from the political side of things. And that appears to be what's going on. We've got an Attorney General, uh, Garland, who has, has authorised the FBI to go in and, and do this. And, and it seems that really now out in the open, because it was always presumed that, uh, you know, Donald Trump was being a target from the left, it seems to be uh, very much out in the open now is what people are saying. The scales are coming off the eyes, so to speak. So, you know, the situation is that uh, the FBI uh, raided his home at Mar-a-Lago in Florida. Uh, they were supposed to... We don't know, though, why. There was, a, there was a, a, a search warrant, but it doesn't really detail why. But it's either regarding the, the Capitol riots, the January 6th uh, stuff, or the fact that uh, the former president removed uh, certain state secrets and files from from the White House. Now, the interesting thing about that is that, um, well, firstly, no former president has ever had their, their private residence raided. This has never happened in the history of the country. I mean, even non-presidents like Hillary Clinton, who had the, the, the secret server, that she, computer server that she was using, even her home was never raided, her private residence, never raided. So this is kind of a step into unknown territory for Americans. There's a lot of rhetoric on the right talking about the fact that this is a banana republic stuff where where the politicisation of the judicial arm of the executive is is a very dangerous step. And you'd have to say, well, it kind of looks like it is. Because on one hand, you've got a former president who might have walked away with a few files from the, from his own office in the White House. And then you've got a current president whose son leaves a laptop in a, in a restaurant with supposedly all kinds of secrets on it. And has there been a raid involving that? No. So, you know, it seems here that the left is ganging up on Donald Trump and that really people who have formerly trusted and gone along with the fact we're going to trust our government to suddenly start and say, well, mm, there's something going on. So explosive right. is how I would call it. OK. OK. Um Meantime, the hearings, the revelations about the Capitol riots keep coming. Is there any sign that anyone of significance uh, will do time, uh, that Trump will do time, will be charged over what happened there? Well, we will wait and see uh, whether the Attorney General uh, will release the affidavit that goes along with this uh, search warrant, and then we will know whether this is related to the Capitol riots. Uh, look, if it is, uh, well, this could be very interesting indeed uh, because uh, while uh, the, the right may look at this and say, well, this is dirty, dirty politics, uh, you know, here comes 2024, this is going to be a shoo-in for President Trump. Uh, in the end, I've been looking at commentators have been saying, well, well, the FBI doesn't go into this willy-nilly. You take from that what you like. Uh, that there may well be some evidence there that uh, points to serious issues uh, or serious uh, problems with how, uh, you know, w with Donald Trump's involvement in those riots. And mm, we shall see. I mean, will they get him, get him into the hearing and where will this lead? I don't know. But uh, as I say before, it's just all part of the, uh, the theatre at the moment here in the United States. It's quite crazy and weird, but very interesting to watch. Steve, you mentioned that um, Trump is still the front runner for the Republican nomination, which I just find personally unbelievable. Uh, look, uh, do you know, um, yesterday or the day before, uh, President Trump released a, a sort of an, a, an advertisement uh, which was sort of all black and white, beautifully shot, cinematic, actually. Mm. And um, it, uh, it, it really, he almost looked, Kennedy-esque, if I could say it, Good Lord. in some of his statements about about the, the demise of America, uh, the fact that the American dream is is tragically, you know, almost over, and that, that this new hope, and um, goodness me, even I'd vote for him after watching that that uh, ad. I mean, he he is he is sort of being seen in the very hard conservative right as as the saviour, shall we say, and. Uh, I don't. Th I, I. I would say on the back of what's happened uh, with these raids, and uh, if he doesn't actually fall fall on the sword over the over the, the Capitol riots, he will be the next president of the United States. Wow. He will be. Hold me to. Hold me to that. I will form. hold you to that, because, uh, Steve. <laughs> unless Alex Jones decides to run, I suppose, or Johnny Depp. <laughs> <Yeah. Gibb. laughs>
<laughs> oh, goodness me. We ain't going there, are we? <laughs> never say never in the US of A. That's right, Steve. Hey, buddy, thank you very much indeed for taking the time. Good to talk to you. That is Steve Wilde, our uh, North American US correspondent. Um, so Alex Jones lives to broadcast another day. I've got this text through from uh, Jeffy. Uh, Alex Jones may be a raving lunatic. There's no may about it. Uh, but he's super entertaining. He's sometimes right about things that once sounded crazy, crazy. And he's a national hero. No, he's not. He's a big mouth. I hope he never changes. Oh, I, well, I don't know. I don't know. All right, so Trump, oh, I just find this hard to believe. Donald Trump could be the proper president again. It is just remarkable, the stupidity of Americans or the polarisation, the craziness of American uh, politics, isn't it?